Hello and welcome to the fill in the blank programmer. In this episode, I'm going to show you some common laptop upgrades that I like to perform on my own laptop to hopefully help you have a better working from home experience. Now, I know uh, that a lot of you consider a laptop to be a black box, something that you don't try to open and you don't try to upgrade. But I have upgraded in one way or another basically every laptop that I have ever owned. And this is everything from memory, storage, Wi-Fi adapters, uh, keyboard, as you will see in one case here, and these are all tiny things that help to make working from a laptop much more pleasant. Now, the, the main thing that I almost always upgrade is the wireless adapter, and I'll show you an example of that here. And that's partially because virtually every laptop sold ships with a terrible Wi-Fi adapter. And if you've got connection problems and dropouts and bad speeds, you can probably very easily address that. But I'm also going to show you a couple of places where your laptop might be lying to you. I need to do a standard disclaimer here. If you take apart your laptop and break something, I am absolutely not responsible for whatever happened to your computer. I am just trying to show you some of my experience with my devices. Now, the very first thing that you're going to need to do is figure out how to safely and correctly take apart your laptop. Now, I do personally have a set of iFixit tools and some other cheap tools that I've gotten off of eBay, and those things are incredibly helpful, particularly the guitar pick kind of thing. So let's just go ahead and start by looking here on iFixit's website. We've got these toolkits. I personally have the 64-bit precision set down here, and then I have some other off-branded things that give me the guitar pick style things and credit card style things for prying apart the parts on your laptop, and that's going to become important. So once you have the tools that you need, the next thing that you need to know is how to actually take your laptop apart. Now, if you are extraordinarily lucky, and have bought from a laptop manufacturer that gives you the actual documentation that you need to take apart your own laptop, then start by going to your laptop manufacturer's support website, put in your serial number, and see what information you can get back. Now, this video is not sponsored by Lenovo, but I will say that this is exactly why I always buy Lenovo laptops. In fact, I have or Lenovo laptops that are currently in service in this house right now. So this is the oldest and cheapest Lenovo that I have lying around. It is the 1110S 11IBR. And this is an extremely simple device. It cost $150 when I bought it brand new, and its manufacture date is April 21st of 2017. I actually bought this laptop specifically for taking to the Pacific++ C++ conference so that I could just have a simple, light, easy-to-carry laptop. So even though this is one of the cheapest laptops that Lenovo has ever made, there is a hardware maintenance manual here. And this is their official service manual, and we can start with the removing and replacing, and we scroll down and we can see that we have documentation here of the screws that need to be removed, and then the order that you should use your guitar pick around the sides of the case to pop the case open. And I will go ahead and overlay a video here of me actually doing this process to take this laptop apart. Now. I have you starting with taking the laptop apart because regardless of what your specs are, manufacturers will make substitutions during the lifetime of a particular model, and so you never really know exactly what's going to be in the laptop. So you start by taking it apart. Now if you are particularly lucky,
And again, this is Lenovo. And you have a laptop like the ThinkPad X13 Gen 1, which I happen to have. This is my main daily driver laptop. There are actually videos on Lenovo's website for how to take apart, replace, and repair virtually every aspect of this thing. These are the official guides from Lenovo. And you can see it even looks like they're using tools uh, similar to those iFixit tools that we showed earlier. Okay, so say you're not lucky. Now, your next best bet is going to be something like iFixit's website. And if you go to iFixit's website, they have repair guides for all of the things, uh, Macs and PC laptops, since that's what we're focusing on at the moment. And you can click here and you can look to see what guides for what devices they happen to have. So let's just say hypothetically you have a Dell laptop. Um, it's not a huge selection here. Let's go ahead and click on the Alienware. And then there's a wide selection of Alienwares. Let's say that I had bought a Dell Alienware 13. Then we have instructions on how to completely take apart this device as well. So iFixit is great for that, both for the tools and for the guides. Now, again, not sponsored by anyone here. Now, your next best bet is to go on YouTube. And you can search for your particular model, and there's probably someone who has made a video on how to disassemble your model laptop. And you can see here that there's these Lenovo X13 disassembly and upgrade options. Again, uh, all of those things are already on Lenovo's website also, but that was the thing that I had to search for at the moment. If we do something a little bit more obscure, like my incredibly cheap 110S, then we can see, yep, here we go. There's even videos on how to disassemble and upgrade that particular laptop. Ah, yes, this SSD upgrade. That is something that we'll be discussing in a minute. Okay, so you've taken your laptop apart. Now you need to go through and look at all of the components there. So like I said earlier, you never really know exactly what's going to be in your particular particular laptop. Uh, if you have the serial number, you might be able to look up the SKU and get all of the individual parts, depending on your laptop manufacturer. But there's a good chance that you're going to have to just go through and look and see what kind of storage connectors do I have? Do I have SATA? Do I have M2? What kind of Wi-Fi connectors do I have? Is it mini PCI, mini PCIe? Is it M.2 mini PCI a form factor? And then you'll also take inventory of every other part while you're in here. Is there the possibility for upgrading your RAM? And you'll see in this particular laptop that I've taken apart that there are empty RAM spots, but I am not going to reflow solder some RAM chips onto here. Much better bet if you actually have a RAM socket. Now, it is unlikely, but entirely possible, that you happen to have a laptop that actually uses a socketed CPU. I haven't seen that in very many years, but it is theoretically possible, and a CPU upgrade is at least theoretically possible. Now, while you're in here, also take note of how the power connector is connected, because I find that is one of the first things to fail on a laptop. And if it is one that is on a small daughter board, then that becomes very easy to actually swap out and replace with just a quick part search on eBay. Okay, so you've taken an inventory of all of the things that are in your laptop and presumably took some pictures while you were in here. So now you know what kind of Wi-Fi adapter you need and perhaps what your storage options are. Now, M.2 is kind of funny. Uh, because it is this keyed device, you can see here in these pictures that some of them have a notch on one side, some a notch on the other, some a notch on both, and you can theoretically see how that means the socket can be used. And you can see here if it's got a notch on the B side, then it's got a SATA connector in it. If it has a notch on the M side, then 
that says PCIe and SATA. And theoretically, you're supposed to be able to look at the actual physical connector on your motherboard. Like in this picture, you can see that this is keyed on one side and know what the capabilities of that socket are. But in experience, I've learned that there's a very good chance that your motherboard is actually lying to you. You might buy a super fast NVMe drive, hoping that you're going to get incredible disk performance, and find out that it's not actually supported by your laptop. And so then you might have to go back to using a SATA-based SSD drive when you go to actually insert it. So that is definitely an annoyance. But once you've determined what parts you need uh, for storage, I recommend buying new off-the-shelf things from your local hardware supplier or from Amazon or something like that. For Wi-Fi cards, I actually recommend that you do a quick search on eBay, and these things can be remarkably inexpensive, and I've never had a problem doing this. And the process for actually swapping one out is pretty straightforward. You remove the screw, you pop off the two antenna connectors. Now you do want to be very careful and make note of which one is on which side. These antenna wires wrap around the bezel of your laptop screen, and that is how you are able to get Wi-Fi reception to your laptop. So once you pop those out, take out the one screw, and then insert the new Wi-Fi adapter, and I do recommend going with Intel products. I've never had a problem with one, so I have up here on eBay a AX210 for $22. You've already gone this far, you've taken your laptop apart, you're ready to upgrade the Wi-Fi, you may as well go to the highest end that you can. So go ahead and put in the new one, attach the screw, very carefully reattach the Wi-Fi antenna wires, and uh, you do want them to snap back into place. But it's all very gentle. I did have one particular case where I had the connector on the Wi-Fi card pop off, and I will try to find footage of that to overlay in this video. Okay, so we've done our storage upgrade. We've determined what our other options are, we've upgraded our Wi-Fi, and we've taken a general inventory of the situation inside our laptop. Now, the next thing is an upgrade that I've never done before, and I just did this past month when I was preparing for this video, and that is an actual keyboard upgrade. If we go back to this information from Lenovo, we can see that they do have an official video on how to take out the keyboard of a ThinkPad X13, and the process is surprisingly simple. And it turns out on my particular laptop that there is no fundamental difference between a keyboard with a backlight and a keyboard without a backlight from the motherboard's perspective. So I was able to order on eBay a brand new keyboard with a backlight, and I am very happy to have done this upgrade. I love having a backlight on my keyboard. It saved me a ton of money compared to ordering it directly from Lenovo with the backlight keyboard already. Um, and, you know, I've had this laptop for over a year, so just having a nice new keyboard feels really great. So I'm very happy that I did that. Okay, I think that covers everything that I wanted to discuss in this episode. Hopefully, with these hints and tips, you can make your working from home experience with your laptop a little bit more pleasant. And hopefully, you can get a few more years of life out of your laptop. And I will just say, as another aside, uh, my nephew has a gaming laptop that shipped with a spinning disk SATA drive in it, which is extraordinarily slow and made the entire laptop feel like a dog, I was able to guide him through installing an NVMe drive in a spare NVMe slot that his laptop happened to have. So it is entirely possible that you have an unused NVMe slot in your laptop right now. So if you like uh, content like this, please be sure to subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching.